This is incredible, isn't it? I mean, the pyramids are four and a half thousand years old, but we're still discovering new things about them. A tiny sample of 4,000 year old dust is placed under a microscope. Inside the lab, the tension is thick enough to cut with a knife. The sequencing machine whirs, spitting out a code that makes no sense. The scientists check their equipment, they run the test again. The result is the same. The DNA found in the mortar of the Great Pyramid is not human, it's not animal, it's not anything they've ever seen. For centuries, we've asked how the pyramids were built. Our next story is about a 4,000-year-old mystery. How were pyramids built? Now, a more terrifying question emerges. What else was built into them? A secret in the stone. For thousands of years, the pyramids of Giza have guarded their secrets with silent, stony indifference. These are not just tombs, they are puzzles on a scale that is hard to wrap your head around. The Great Pyramid alone is made of over 2 million stone blocks, each weighing at least 5,000 pounds. That's like lifting a car and placing it with the precision of a watchmaker over and over again. And you can see this everywhere in its design. The structure is aligned to true north with an accuracy that modern technology would struggle to replicate. For centuries, the big question was always how. How did an ancient civilization with simple tools achieve such a monumental feat? But as it turns in, what many overlooked was that we were asking the wrong question. The real question isn't how, but who, or maybe what. A team of molecular archaeologists and geneticists from a top international institute got permission to do something never done before. They weren't interested in the giant blocks of limestone. They were interested in the glue that held them together, the ancient mortar. You see, this mortar, a type of gypsum-based plaster, is an incredible time capsule. Anything that fell into it while it was wet, a strand of hair, a fleck of skin, a drop of sweat, could be preserved for millennia. The team's goal was simple, to extract ancient human DNA and learn more about the workforce. They wanted to know about their health, their ancestry, and their lives. To put it mildly, what they found was not what they expected. The process was painstaking. Dressed in sterile suits to avoid contamination, the researchers drilled tiny, careful cores from the mortar and joints deep within the pyramid, far from modern tourists and pollution. They brought the samples back to a state-of-the-art, hyper-clean lab. The first few tests were promising. They found fragments of human DNA confirming that ancient Egyptian workers, likely of North African and Levantine descent, were indeed present. This was a great discovery, but it wasn't the headline. The headline came from Sample 7B, taken from a load-bearing joint nearly 300 feet up. As the sequencing data scrolled across the screen, an anomaly appeared. A big one. There was a clear, strong, and completely intact strand of DNA that was unlike anything in their databases. It wasn't human. It wasn't from any known animal, from a cow to a camel to a desert fox. It wasn't a plant, and it wasn't a fungus. It was a complex, multicellular life form, but its genetic structure was alien. The most shocking fact is the double helix structure was there, but the arrangement of its base pairs followed patterns that have never been recorded. It was like finding a book written in an alphabet nobody knew existed. The lab went into a quiet frenzy. They re-ran the sample. Then they re-ran it again. Every single time, the result was the same. Trapped in the mortar of the Great Pyramid was the biological blueprint of a creature unknown to science. A creature that was there on the Giza Plateau as humanity was building its first great wonder. The implications are just staggering. Every theory about the pyramids was built on one solid foundation, that humans, and only humans, were the architects. Now that foundation has a massive crack running right through it. The discovery raises a thousand new questions for every old one it answers. Was this a creature used for labor? Was it a supervisor? Or was it something far, far stranger? But the code they found was just the beginning of this incredible mystery, a biological enigma. Once the initial shock wore off, the science team went into overdrive. Their mission was now to identify this ghost genome. You see, finding unknown DNA is one thing, but figuring out what kind of creature it belongs to is another. It's like finding a single, unidentifiable footprint in the sand. You know something was there, but you have no idea what it looked like. 
The team started by comparing the mystery DNA to the vast genetic libraries that contain the codes for millions of species. They ran it against every known phylum on the planet from the simplest bacteria to the most complex mammals. The result, zero matches, not even a distant cousin. The thing nobody tells you about DNA is that all life on Earth shares a common ancestor. A human shares about 60% of its DNA with a banana and about 98% with a chimpanzee. We are all connected by this shared genetic heritage, but this DNA, it was different. It showed some characteristics of terrestrial life. It used the same four chemical bases, for instance, but the way they were structured and the genes they formed were totally unique. One scientist on the team described it as looking at the schematics for a car, but seeing that it was designed to run on water instead of gasoline. It was familiar, yet fundamentally impossible by our current understanding of biology. The team even looked at extremophiles, creatures that live in the most hostile environments on Earth, like volcanic vents or deep sea trenches. These organisms often have bizarre genetics that allow them to survive but even they were more closely related to humans than this sample from the pyramid. The most shocking fact is that some of the genes in the mystery DNA seem to code for traits that are biologically baffling. There were markers for extreme cellular regeneration far beyond that of any lizard or starfish. There were also protein structures that suggested an ability to withstand immense physical pressure far greater than anything a land-based animal would ever need. It was the biological signature of a creature built for something else, for some other purpose, or some other world. Many people are crazy about the idea that the pyramid blocks were too heavy to lift. While a workforce of thousands could have done it, the logistics are mind-boggling. They had to quarry, transport, and lift over 2 million blocks, some weighing up to 80 tons. That's 160,000 pounds. What if they had help? Not from aliens and spaceships necessarily, but from something biological, a creature engineered or evolved for heavy lifting. The DNA found in the mortar doesn't prove this, of course, but for the first time it makes the idea less like science fiction and more like a real, tangible possibility. It opens a door that was previously locked and bolted shut. What was this creature? Where did it come from? And more importantly, where did it go? The builders we never knew. With every scientific dead end they hit, the researchers were forced to consider more and more out there ideas. When you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. And all the possible explanations had been eliminated. This DNA wasn't from a known animal. It wasn't a contaminant. It was real, and it was in the pyramid. So what were the improbable possibilities left on the table? The first and most obvious one is, to put it mildly, controversial. The idea that we weren't alone, that an extraterrestrial intelligence visited Earth in our distant past. This theory has been around for decades, fueled by ancient carvings that look like astronauts and texts that describe gods from the sky. But it was always just speculation. The discovery of this non-terrestrial DNA is different. It's not a carving that can be misinterpreted, it's physical data. You see, if a species from another planet came here, it's very likely they would have brought their own biology with them. Plants, animals, or even microbes. What if the DNA in the mortar belongs to a creature they brought along, a kind of work animal used to help with the heavy lifting? Another, perhaps even stranger possibility is that this creature wasn't from another planet, but from our own. A species that existed alongside early humans, but which went extinct and left no fossil record a branch of the evolutionary tree that we never knew existed. What many overlooked is that our planet's history is full of missing chapters. We are constantly finding fossils of animals we never dreamed of. Could there have been an intelligent or semi-intelligent species that coexisted with us? One that had unique biological advantages and then simply vanished? Maybe it was a creature perfectly adapted to the desert, strong and resilient, that the Egyptians tamed or partnered with. Then there's the theory that connects this to other ancient mysteries. Many people are crazy about legends of lost civilizations like Atlantis, a technologically advanced society that was wiped out by a catastrophe. What if they weren't entirely human? What if they had mastered genetic engineering thousands of years before we did? They could have created bespoke creatures for specific tasks. 
The DNA in the mortar could be the signature of one of these engineered life forms, a living tool used by a forgotten culture. It sounds like a movie plot, but the evidence sitting in that lab makes it a real hypothesis to consider. The truth is, we don't know. But for the first time, the conversation has shifted from, did aliens visit us? To what evidence do we have, Bay? And the answer might be a tiny fragment of DNA from a 4,500 year old construction site. But if this is true, why are we only hearing about it now? The truth is out there and right here. The people watching this are probably wondering the same thing. If a discovery this huge was made, one that rewrites human history, why isn't it on the front page of every newspaper in the world? The thing nobody tells you is how science really works, especially when it comes to finds that challenge everything we believe. There's a resistance to ideas that are too revolutionary. The official story of the pyramids, that they were built by thousands of Egyptian laborers with ramps and sleds, is a cornerstone of ancient history. Are we missing a key detail, or are we being told to ignore it? The research team that made the discovery is now in a difficult position. They have published their initial findings in a peer-reviewed journal, but they did so very cautiously. They called it an unclassified biological genome and pointed out that more research is needed. But behind the scenes, the story is much more dramatic. The results have been sent to other labs around the world for confirmation, and sources say that several have independently verified the finding. Yet, there has been a strange silence. There's a feeling that the implications are so massive, so paradigm-shifting, that many in the scientific and historical community simply don't want to touch it. It's easier to pretend it's an error than to face the consequences of it being real. And you can see this pattern every single time a major discovery shakes the world. Think about it. When evidence surfaces that doesn't fit neatly into our textbooks, the first reaction isn't excitement. It's fear. The core of this story is that our ancestors might not have built the great monuments of the past entirely on their own. The pyramids, those impossible towering symbols of human achievement, may have been constructed with help from something not entirely human. If that's true, what does it say about our place in history, about our place in the universe? It challenges everything we think we know about our own ingenuity. It suggests that maybe we're not the ultimate architects of civilization. Maybe we're just one part of a much larger plan, guided or nudged by something we barely understand. The question is, have we been the ones writing history or just living inside someone else's story? Of course, that idea terrifies people. It's easier to believe we're in control, that our ancestors were just smarter or stronger than we give them credit for. But deep down, we sense there's more to the story. Are we being shielded from the truth because the world isn't ready to hear it? Or is the truth being buried because it would dismantle everything we've built our civilization on? Our religions, our pride, our sense of order? Maybe it's not fear at all that drives the secrecy. Maybe it's protection from a truth so vast it could shake our sense of identity. Imagine learning that we're not the first intelligent species to shape this planet. Imagine finding out that we were never alone, that we've been watched, guided, and maybe even tested. But here's the twist. This doesn't have to be a dark revelation. It could be a beautiful one. It could mean the universe is far more alive and connected than we ever dared believe. Maybe those ancient builders weren't servants or slaves, but collaborators in something cosmic, a partnership between species or between worlds. This discovery changes everything we thought we knew about our past. Were ancient humans more advanced than we ever believed, or did they have help from something not of this world? Let us know your theories in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more secrets from our hidden history.